A lot of people have asked me to do a video about shifting and how to shift and things. And I thought about it for a long time and couldn't really come up with anything that was new and exciting and um, interesting about shifting. So I thought rather than talk about that, what about talk about how to use shifting to get loosened up in the left hand and what we can do to feel better about moving up and down on our instrument. For this video, I'm gonna use the key of D, so I'll just start by warming up with a key of D scale. I use that bowing a lot when I practice, so let me just go over that. You play one note, that's the D, repeat the D. Play the next note, which is E, then repeat that, etc. What do we need to do to make our left hand work well? Well, one of the things is that it needs to be nice and free. So I'm always sure that I have a lot of flexibility, whether it's in my wrist or my arm or my fingers or my thumb. So while I'm doing these exercises, I have a really, a real acute awareness of things that are loose. The first thing that I might do is play a one octave scale, but all with the first finger and then all with the second finger, etc. So on the first finger, I'll play. <laughs> like that. You'll notice that my hand changes position. It goes from like something like this to something like this because I'm always making sure that all my fingers are able to be over the fingerboard so I can use them well. You'll notice I'm very gentle with my thumb. I don't touch very hard and I'm always adjusting it. When I'm putting my finger down, I put my finger on the string and hang it there. So it retains its curved shape so we can just hang on to the string like that. That way my thumb is all relaxed and everything. And I'm always thinking about that. So when I'm doing these shifting exercises, I'll think that my pad is just hanging on the string. <laughs> I'll let the thumb touch the fingerboard as much as it needs to. Then I'll move to my second finger. There's no right or wrong when you're doing these exercises. You do them to accommodate your playing. Third finger. A lot of people say, yeah, when you play scales like that, you shouldn't use vibrato. What do I have to say about that? If you don't want to use vibrato, don't use vibrato. But I like to use a little bit of vibrato because you see when I put my finger down like this, it's not moving. When something's not moving, it's not flexible enough to me. So when I put my finger down, I always like to have a little bit of movement in the hand. So everything's flexible. You can see the wrist moves, the fingers move. I can't say that enough. So when I do these exercises, I'm always trying to feel that I'm moving. So a little bit of vibrato helps me do that. On to the fourth finger. Like that. I think I'm not really playing perfectly in tune at the moment, but that's not really the, um, the point of this um, video. And 
also you can realize that um, making mistakes and playing a few notes out of tune is not the end of the world. We all want to play perfectly in tune. Don't get me wrong. We all strive to play in tune. We all strive to play with no mistakes. But as musicians and as people, we make mistakes. We play out of tune. Let's face it. Everybody does. Nobody watches someone playing beautifully and says, you know, that was really beautiful, but you know, they played one note out of tune. People don't think like that. They think that person really plays beautifully. If you don't play that beautifully and you play out of tune, it's a little bit of a different story, I guess. But remember, we all try to play beautifully. The point of playing our instrument is that we want to make beautiful music and create a beautiful sound. I like to play the scales up and I actually didn't play on this video any of them going down, but don't forget, scales can go up or down, ascending, descending. So I also practice going down just for the sake of this video. It takes twice as long to go both ways, but you do have to practice going down. It's actually harder going down. It's just like climbing a, a tall mountain. It's much easier to, to keep your track going up than when you start coming down, you start wanting to trip. So, so do practice a lot coming down. But if you feel more comfortable, go up first for a while, and then after you're comfortable going up, then start going down later. The next thing I want to go to is um, a system of shifting by a guy named Gaylord Yost, Y-O-S-T. I think you can find that shifting book on IMSLP. If not, you can leave a comment and I'll send a copy of a few pages of it to you. But that one, we shift from one finger to another in a kind of an organized manner. It starts off with same finger shifts. In a same finger shift, you just basically slide. So in the first finger, you slide from an E to a G if I'm going into third position. Like that. When I go from an E to an A, this time it's a little different. I have to shift from my E to the G in third position and then put my second finger down to an A. And when I shift down, then I shift from the A to an F sharp, since it's in the key of D, which is the second finger in first position, to an E. You might have to think about this for a while, where your finger should go. What is your lead note? So I go E, G, A. And then A, F sharp, E. A few times. Then I'll shift from the E to the third position third finger, which is a B, so I'll shift from the E to a G to a B, etc. Like that. When I get to the second finger, I'll go from first position to third position. So that's a second finger F sharp to an A, and I'll just warm up with the same finger. Let me just show from the other side a little bit. Like that. Then when I go to the next note, that would actually be from a second finger to a first finger. So I'll shift from the second finger to an A and then drop it into a G. Like so, and then to the fourth finger. Like that, same thing with the third finger. Then the fourth finger shifts. 
The fourth finger shifts are great because it helps strengthen that fourth finger. You see that? Etc. Then we can go and do from the first position to the second position. So Like that. We can go to the fourth position. We can do all sorts of things. So basically we're going from one position to the next. The next thing that I want to go to is Sevchik, Opus 8, exercises in the change of the position, which is really, really a well-known exercise. You hear people play the same thing all the time. <laughs> which is starting on a D on the viola on the C string and playing in the key of F or starting on the A on the violin on the G string and playing in the key of C and that's about it. And people usually just do it on the bottom string and forget about it. But we can do this on all strings in all keys. So right now we're in the key of D. So I'm going to play in the key of D on the D string, which is where I'm working right now. It's really good to practice on the D string and the G string because they're in the middle of the instrument. It just gives us a great feel for the instrument. So. You notice how I'm how I'm playing in the key of D on the D string. Etc. After I do a little sev check to get a good feel of going up and down the instrument, I might do a few octaves. The first thing that I do is kind of a Yoast way of doing an octave, which is to shift from first position, then I'd go to fifth position and put my fourth finger down. You can see there's a lot of flexibility when I'm shifting. See my thumb is moving, everything's moving fluidly, so I like that. Then I'll shift from one finger. That's me playing an octave going from one to four, then one to three, then one to two, then one to one. Let me show that from the other side. Notice when I do these shifts that when I'm shifting up, when I'm making a large shift, I'll shift pretty fast at the bottom and then slow towards the note because I have more control over it. like that. Is it perfectly in tune? Not that time. I try to, but, um, you know, just, just throwing my hand around a little bit and trying to get the feel of the fingerboard. It's not a question of, you know, if you, if you try to play too perfectly when you're doing something like that, you lose the feel of trying to have that fluidity on the fingerboard, and that's what we're looking for. When I play a piece, after practicing these exercises, I think about how fluid can I be on my fingerboard. So um, I don't know, how about vocalese? Something like that has a few shifts in it. And you can see the fluidity that I have now in my left hand. You 
can see that as I'm shifting, everything is flowing, so it feels good for me. So if nothing else, these shifting thoughts are a great way to warm up on the instrument. Um, you can even just make things up. Just little tunes that are on the D string that are in the key of D just to have that feeling of the fingers. Or you can make a big shift. Something like that. The main thing I have to keep on saying is that we try to have fluidity. Then when you go ahead and you're practicing the rest of the day, your hand feels really well in shape. I hope all this stuff helps you. I know it's a bit um, jumbled. It was just kind of thoughts of how to shift in order to keep your hand loose. To recap the video, the first thing that I do is to play a D major scale. <laughs> After that, I'll play a one finger scale. Making sure everything's intact. The next thing I'll do, I'll play a little bit of Yoast. After I do the Yoast, I might do a few, a few large shifts. Little sev check. And then maybe a piece to play to loosen up my hand. Um, like that.